Hello, in this brief tutorial, I'm going to show you how I'd like for you to set up your final renders for submission. And also, this is just a general guideline for a way that you can display your work. I think it has a lot of utility. It's nice and clean, and it's nice to have a consistent presentation across all of your work. It makes it feel like a more curated collection rather than just a hodgepodge. So these are the three images. We've got the final painter render, and then shots of the high poly geometry and then a shot of the wireframe and the uvs and these are on one image so i prefer to use substance painter for the high poly render i believe you can probably do a render in fusion and i i know you can do renders in, in zbrush but i think painter is going to give the most consistent and high quality results and it's pretty easy to just import your project your high poly geo directly into painter just going to go ahead and select my knife high. In this case, I'm using the knife. You'll be using whatever you're using. And then I'm going to leave all of these as default. It's possible if you have a very dense piece of geometry that you'll want to turn this off. I think it's basically just an auto unwrap, assuming you have a low poly that needs UVs, um, if you're just doing something kind of quick and dirty. But I don't, I don't see any extra uh, lag in the amount of time it takes to import this, so I'm going to leave it on, because I'm not sure if it's going to throw an error if I turn it off. But anyway. Painter is by default going to assume that what you're importing is a low poly. So this is a little bit of a special case. We're going to go ahead and make a fill layer here. And we're going to change a couple of these values. We're going to set the value of the materials brightness to 0.4. And then in the roughness, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, decrease this to 0.25. So it's just a little bit shinier. Right, and uh, now we're going to hop over to the rendering mode. We'll go to the display settings menu. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the environment map from panorama to this one right here, which is soft one front. And it's going to be a nice strong light from the front. And then at the back of it is going to have basically no lighting information at all. So yours should look like this. We're going to go ahead and turn on clear color for the background. We're going to turn off ground so we don't have any shadows. You couldn't see a shadow on the ground because I think the light was in the wrong place, but you can see that there. And it's just going to make it harder to composite this image with other images if there is some kind of shadowing going on. We're going to set the clear color value here to 0 0.02. So it's dark, which gives us a nice contrast and doesn't distract too much from, from our image. And now I'm just going to try to set up my light by holding the shift key and the right mouse button. You can rotate the light around. Just try to find something that's kind of dynamic. So, you know, it gives us some shadowing. Like if you're like dead on and we're not getting a whole lot of information here, it's maybe not as valuable as if we just angle the light a little bit. And then all of these things, we start to get more information about what that depth looks like. So I'm going to hypothetically, we'll just let this render blah, blah, blah. You would maybe let it sit for a minute or two longer. You can see what the rendering status is right here. So now it's done rendering. So if you see this as done and it still looks kind of noisy, you can increase the samples, increase the time, and it'll continue to resolve. And then I'm just going to basically rotate. I rotated the light on accident there. We'll just rotate the knife around or whatever it is that you've got. In this case, I've only got two sides that are interesting. You may have more than two sides, in which case you would definitely want to make sure that you've got an appropriate number of shots of your geometry. And we'll just find, once again, something kind of interesting. Now, what I didn't do here is hit print screen and then go into Photoshop, but you would, have, of course, would have done that. Or you can also just export your render. I think right here you can save your render out. And my monitor is, whatever, 21 100 pixels by whatever I can find out but basically like if I hit print screen I'm going to have a big enough image for my final render if I hop over to Photoshop all three of these images are the same width even though I'm, I'm zoomed out a little bit this is going to be the full size and that width is a number that's easy to remember it is 2000 pixels wide I don't care at all about the height because as you're scrolling through ArtStation we're just doing a vertical scroll and you'll just look at the images as they need to be but for them to all have a consistent width I think is is a nice touch. So just plan on having a 2000 pixel wide image and then your the things that you're dropping in should all have enough resolution at that at that size to look pretty nice. And if for whatever reason you need to go a little wider, go wider. Um, I don't know how long this video is going to be on the internet. It may be in five years. 2000 pixels is a joke. 
and you need 10,000 pixels or something or or even more. So be flexible, whatever whatever the uh, the project requires. But I wouldn't go less than this. ArtStation will resize your stuff so that it looks good uh, and fits on their screen or whatever uh, the viewer's device happens to be. All right, so uh, let's see. So that's the high poly, right? And then I try to have the, the, the images approximately the same size and oriented in a way that they feel related to each other. Uh, if you wanted to have more images, that'd be fine. But if you have images that are the same thing, just from different sides, like if you have a symmetrical model, you don't have to include an image for that. It just detracts from everything else because everything has to get smaller. One thing you absolutely must not under any situation ever do is resize something bigger. So like, let's just say hypothetically, you captured your image a little bit smaller. It's not okay to just do that to make it fit 2000 pixels because you see how much resolution we've lost here. Now this one looks all blurry and it's not good. So definitely don't do that. If your monitor is not big enough to take a screenshot uh, that's big enough to fill out a 2000 pixel wide image, what you can do is you can set your stuff right here. So we say override viewport resolution and you can just type in 2000 here. And then once it's done rendering, you know, you set your height bigger or smaller depending on whatever it needs to be. You can just hit save render and it'll save out. I think it'll give you a lot of options, but whatever, you should, you should have no trouble getting a render that looks good. Okay, so that's how you get your images out of Substance Painter. You would do the same thing for your final. Just make sure that you're taking your screenshots big enough so that they are comfortably sitting inside of a 2000 pixel wide image. We don't want to be uh, scaling your images up. And then for your wireframe, Something like this is kind of what we're looking for. Some some relevant information. Obviously, we want to see the, the geo. If you can include the try count, and the try count lives here. The tries, you just select your geometry, and it's going to be that number right there. And you don't have to include every last one. You can if you want. Um, you know, knocking 22 off so that we get a nice round number there is not going to uh, throw anybody. And then just include your uh, a shot of your UVs. Uh, and that should be sufficient for setting up your, your final presentations for your projects. And then finally, I want you to include a link to your ArtStation page at the bottom of every single image in the exact same spot. And it doesn't really matter what font you use, just don't get too fancy with it. Nobody cares about your font. They just want it to be easy to read. So just pick something generic. Arial is fine. I think this is like Microsoft Sans Serif, you know, whatever. If you really want to get fancy, I guess you can try a little bit, but like, don't go, don't go nuts and, and don't do anything distracting and keep it small, right? Like th this image is not about your art station link. This image is about this. And if somebody wants to learn more, then they can do so without having to uh, hunt around too much. And once you have everything set up, the order of the presentation should be the textured beauty render and then your high poly geo and then the wireframe and UVs. All right, there you go. Looking forward to seeing your work and let me know if you have any questions. See ya.